today, like we said, we're going to talk about prolactin regulation. Um, you know, we mentioned in video number one, prolactin is a hormone which is secreted from the anterior pituitary gland. So right over here, we kind of uh, illustrate over here the anterior pituitary gland. The hypothalamus is what actually controls the pituitary gland. So the hypothalamus releases both stimulatory hormones as well as inhibitory hormones. So specifically for prolactin, you got the stimulatory effect from a hormone called the thyroid releasing hormone. The thyroid releasing hormone which is released from the hypothalamus. Prolactin is inhibited by a hormone called dopamine. Dopamine which is produced in the hypothalamus. Another name for dopamine, in case you read in your books anywhere or somewhere else, is actually referred to as the prolactin inhibitory factor. One more important concept about this whole regulation of prolactin, prolactin actually regulates itself as well. So as prolactin levels increase, what does it do? It goes back and it tells the hypothalamus to make more dopamine so that dopamine levels can suppress the prolactin. So what does prolactin actually do in the body? So it prepares uh, the female breast for both lactation and the uh, production of milk uh, throughout pregnancy. So second thing, what does prolactin do? Prolactin is going to inhibit uh, all the reproductive functions while a female is actually pregnant. So prolactin inhibits gonadotropin releasing hormone, which inhibits the release of the FSH and the LH. Normally FSH and LH does is uh, for the female it does ovulation. During pregnancy, the last thing the female wants to do is ovulate. Well, what happens in the male when FSH and LH is working? Spermatogenesis. So again, if GnRH is inhibited, spermatogenesis is not going to occur in the male. But now there's going to be situations where prolactin levels are going to be extremely, extremely high. So let's start off with the female again. Uh, well, we can actually see in both the female and the male, there's going to be a loss of libido. Uh, you know, in case you forgot, what does libido mean? Libido means loss of sort of sexual desire. Okay. Looking specifically at the female, you're going to see uh, something called amenorrhea. Now, for some females, it's going to be complete amenorrhea. For some females, it's going to be uh, menstrual irregularities. Next thing is galactorrhea. What is galactorrhea? Galactorrhea is a milky discharge from the breast. What is she going to complain about? This white nipple discharge, basically. White nipple milky discharge. Okay? And again, the breast size is going to increase as well. Now for the man, we mentioned uh, something similar to the female, he's going to have the loss of libido. And another important concept over here is impotence. So impotence, the man's going to talk about, uh, he's going to complain to his doctor about erection issues or not being able to uh, basically perform well sexually in bed with his partners anymore. Okay. The male, if you notice over here, we didn't really say that the man is going to get galactorrhea or his breast size will increase. And you know, these two concepts are very, very rare. It's basically because the man doesn't have enough breast tissue to sort of undergo these changes as well. Okay. Well, now that we know what prolactin levels do, well, why does prolactin levels increase to that uh, extent where these uh, pathological issues happen? So let's take a closer look. Prolactinomas, what are prolactinomas? Prolactinomas are benign pituitary adenomas. Uh, the patient's also going to present with uh, uh, visual field defects. And what I tried to uh, illustrate over here is bitemporal hemianopia. Okay, so visual defects as well as headaches. So in a prolactinoma, the prolactin levels are really, really high. 200 milligrams per milliliter. That's how high it is. So if you see that on a test question, you definitely know you're dealing with a prolactinoma, the most common cause of hyperprolactinemia. Okay? How do you treat this patient with prolactinomas? What you do first is you actually give a medication that will increase the dopamine levels. Okay, and why does that make sense to you guys? And it should, because we mentioned over here, dopamine when dopamine levels are elevated, what happens? They will go down to the prolactin levels and inhibit the production like we showed over here. Giving dopamine agonists such as bromocryptin or cabergolin will actually help reduce the size of this prolactinoma, the specific pituitary adenoma. Okay, And if medications don't work, then you finally go into surgery. And for the USMLE, you definitely need to know the name of the surgery. It's a surgical resection referred to as a transphenoidal resection. Good. Another cause of hyperprolactinemia, high blood prolactin levels, is hypothyroidism. And specifically, it's a primary hypothyroidism. Okay, so what's going to happen over there is you have the thyroid gland this time. The thyroid gland is not functioning properly. It's not releasing the thyroid hormones, which is T3 and T4. So as a result, T3 and T4 is going to go back to the hypothalamus 
it's going to tell the hypothalamus, hey, we don't have any thyroid hormones, so can you please release more TRH? So more TRH is going to be released. Well, what? guess what? It's going to go to the anterior pituitary gland, and it's going to cause this release in prolactin again. So when you have that release in prolactin, depending on if you're a female or a male, you're going to come with all these side effects of too much prolactin levels, okay? How do you treat this hypothyroid patient? Basically, you're treating the underlying cause. You wanna make sure you can give this patient thyroid hormone, okay? Medications. Medications are an important, important cause of high prolactin levels. One thing I definitely wanna illustrate over here is your concept of using antipsychotics. Because you're gonna have at least, you know, five, 10 questions on the USMLE where they give the patient antipsychotic and you definitely want to know some of the side effects. So one important major, major side effect of antipsychotics is high prolactin levels. Now, does that make sense? Well, why would you give a patient an antipsychotic? Well, the patient is probably undergoing some sort of psychosis and uh, you know, we're going to talk about this in our psychiatry lectures, but what are some conditions you can think of right now? Definitely one of them being schizophrenia. So in schizophrenia, what's going on? Pathologically, there is way too much dopamine. So if there's way too much dopamine, we're not really worried about prolactin levels because it barely exists. What happens when prolactin levels are actually decreased? Well, when prolactin levels are decreased, unless the female is actually pregnant, she's not going to be able to produce milk for her baby. Okay, so keep that one in mind too. But you have to treat the psychotic uh, state in a schizophrenic patient. What do you do? You give them antipsychotics antipsychotics are gonna bring down the level of dopamine. So as you decrease the level of dopamine, what happens to the prolactin levels? They're gonna increase. When prolactin levels are increased, all the same stuff. The man's gonna present with decreased libido and impotence. The female's gonna present with decreased libido, amenorrhea, galactorrhea, and breast size will increase. Now, as you can kind of understand, will your patients be happy taking these antipsychotics? Probably not. The man is going to definitely complain about having uh, sexual problems. He's going to say, hey, I don't want to take these antipsychotics. The female may say, you know what, I've lost uh, sexual interest as well. I'm having this nipple discharge. I'm not comfortable with it. She's going to stop taking the medications. So of course, you're going to have to review the medications. You're going to have to see if you can supplement with a different medication. But these are some of the common side effects that will be seen both by the man and the female. Okay. Other medications you want to be aware of as well, SSRIs, TCAs, SSRIs stand for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, TCAs, Tricarboxylic Acids, you got the opioids over here, you got the H2 blockers, one H2 blocker you want to know for sure, Simetidine, okay? H2 stands for histamine, so we're talking about histamine blockers. This one over here, Metoclopramide, that is another dopamine receptor antagonist which is used to uh, help patients with nausea, okay? So after medications, estrogen. When you have high estrogen states, that also increases prolactin levels. So when will estrogen states be really high? Oral contraceptive pills, so females taking OCPs and females that are pregnant, okay? Another, a few other causes, we got alcohol, we got uh, people who are chronic weed smokers. Weed is known as marijuana, so chronic marijuana smokers. And we got some more on the other side. We got renal failure, cirrhosis, uh, stress, exercise. And this last concept over here, if you can actually read it, seizures. So now if a patient is having a true seizure, there will be a prolactin surge if you can actually uh, you know, measure it at the right time. Now, why am I saying true seizure? Because there's a concept called pseudo seizure. A pseudo seizure, on the other hand, usually has some sort of emotional or underlying uh, psychological trigger or issue, which is not really a true seizure. And in these patients, you won't get the uh, you won't get the increase in prolactin. Again, this test is not really used as much, but just in case, just in case your boards actually take you that far and they want you to distinguish what is the difference, uh, how would you tell a pseudo seizure from a real seizure? It's the prolactin surge that you get in it actual seizure. Now what we want to do is we want to give you a quick recap 
and let you know some of the important, important facts that you better make sure you got down for your USMLE Step 1 preparation. Okay, so go back to this section over here. Make sure you understand the whole uh, regulation of between the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland releasing prolactin. It's, again, stimulated by TRH, inhibited by dopamine. So when you're thinking about that, think about situations why prolactin will be increased, like we have all of these causes over here. So how do you treat these patients? Always, always, always treat the underlying cause. If it's a prolactinoma, start with the medications, like we said, dopamine agonists. If it's hypothyroidism, give them some thyroid hormones. The medications over here that are causing uh, too much prolactin, see if you can stop the medication, see if you can switch to another kind of medication. If you're dealing with renal failure, cirrhosis, try to treat the underlying cause again. Okay, with all these situations, try to treat the underlying cause. In case you want to go back and refresh your memory with some of the basic stuff, you know, click on uh, video number one. Next video, we're going to talk about antidiuretic hormone. Again, guys, thank you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure for promo to actually share some uh, information with you. I, I, I want you guys to like, I want you to subscribe. I want you to share this video with all of your friends so that way, you know, you're learning and your friends are learning too. All right, guys, until next time, we'll see you later.